coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. I didn't come 3,000 miles, okay, to get hung up on. I'm good at what I do, I work my balls off. This will spook a lot of people. You know, you look at a stock that you have a couple thousand shares and down seven and a half bucks. People want to run, they want to sell. I'm in the Dominican Republic right now to meet with a potential investor for our fund. This area will become basically the private beach. Happy hurricane season, everybody. We have a hurricane forming off the coast of South Africa. Could slam into Florida. It's fing scary. Overnight, trillions of dollars have disappeared from the system. So there is a ramification and a spillover effect into the commodities, into the metals, into everything. You hearing any talk of that in there yet, or not really? No. Nope. This is the entire world making too large a bets with other people's money and leveraging those bets. And the reality is, this bet should have never been made. We are bracing for a slowdown, a recession. Earnings are going to dry up. Your hedge funds are going to dry up. You're going to start seeing layoffs on Wall Street. At three and a half! 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 Look, this is what markets do. They weed out the people that aren't supposed to be here over time. I mean, there's too many untalented people that are managing too much money and should have never been doing that. And now it's, you know, coming time to pay the piper. Five and a half! Five and a half! We live in an incredibly historical time. I think that we've grown up accustomed to rising prices, rising real estate, rising stock markets, rising bond markets. Most of us have never experienced a downside. You know, maybe in 1987, if they can remember back that far, you had one day, you dropped 25%, but after that, it was straight up and over, you know, for years. One day. Back to 130 here now. And the world is starting to realize what the downside volatility can look like. And it's f***ing scary. Five for ten. What are you betting? Uh, set four foot. One set for five for ten. Wow, look at that thing move. Holy f***. I've never seen a stock do that before. There's no point in even watching it right now. <laughs> Last week, Santa's had earnings. Their Q3 earnings call. They beat the earnings estimates out there. Most people were expecting about 32 cents. They came in at 54. Just go bonkers one time. It was one of those things on Wall Street where basically company reported great news and we had a bad result. What I mean by that is Ellie Harari, the CEO, came out and said, guys, listen, we've got more demand than we can meet. We can't even meet all our demand for the fourth quarter. The stock pulled back a couple dollars that night, um, but nothing major. Right, so what you've seen is they've traded down recently. Friday we come in and coincidentally, uh, it was the 20th anniversary of the big market crash. 1987, October, there was a huge market crash. It only added fuel to the fire, threw some kerosene on it, Santos was down seven and a half bucks. Wall Street can certainly be a superstitious bunch. Uh, the guys I talked to, there's definitely some hard feelings that they didn't want to buy stock Friday morning and apparently no one was buying Santos Friday morning either. What you'll find today is you get this, the stock on sale short-term turbulation right here, but me and Jimmy are making sure we get all these guys on the phone, making sure no one's losing faith in our story, and, and that's what we've got to do for the next couple weeks. You don't have a cowboy running this company. He's the founder of the company. He's still the CEO. This will spook a lot of people. You know, you look at a stock that you have a couple thousand shares and down seven and a half bucks. People want to run. They want to sell. First thing, the easiest thing to do is sell your stock. I want out of this thing. It's not performing. You know, the hardest thing is to do is, is really grab your balls and buy some more stock down here. 
lower your dollar cost average. You know, and that's what we're trying to do. Especially with the numbers that came out, you know, with the new earnings. You know, Wall Street is the type of place where it's not what you've done yesterday, it's what you're going to do tomorrow. We got a $70 stock on our hands. We just have to make sure we get there one way or the other. Like I told you, this is a long-term relationship, and I'm looking to prove myself to you here. I'm in the Dominican Republic right now. I'm here to meet with a potential investor for our fund. I'm meeting with the owner of Sun Village Resorts. Not sure exactly what to expect here, but this is an opportunity to get to know him better and hope to have him see the value in our fund and uh, look to invest in us. It's a really gorgeous landscape here, and I can see there's a lot of development going on now, which is why I'm up here to meet with the owner. He's made a tremendous amount of money off the real estate here. They've been investing here for 20 or 30 years. And as additional foreign money comes into the island, he just continues to profit from that. Awesome. So we're firing up the audit then? It's great. Very nice. The owner put me up in a Maxim Bungalow two-bedroom suite. He's really taking care of me. It's great when you can combine business with actually relaxation a little bit. So this is my weekend. I'm taking an early flight back on Sunday um, to get back and get some work done for a Monday morning meeting. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, I've got a couple days to enjoy myself, meet with some locals, try to try to understand more of the life of one of my clients. Richard Oldas, nice to meet you. Good to see you. We are looking to recruit one person mm -hmm. at the analyst level. Uh, we focus primarily on restructurings. It's very labor intensive. Mm -hmm. You should know this. Two weeks ago, I had an important job interview with Richard Halthouse. He's looking to hire a couple more analysts for his company, and the way he talked to me, I just kind of assumed he was going to offer me the position. He wanted to meet again and discuss things more. Je vais réfléchir, comme vous avez dit, vous partez pendant deux semaines, donc d'ici deux semaines, j'aurai une réponse pour vous. I've been in Paris for two weeks now, and in terms of job prospects, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And then Richard called me back, and he, he wants to meet again, and he wants to know if I'm really interested in the position. Is that you? So I've got a meeting with him this afternoon. And then also, a couple days ago, I heard back from this company based in New York. They're called FXCM, and it's basically a foreign exchange trading company. I'd been in touch with them before graduation, and they're interested in seeing me regarding a junior analyst position there. So, you know, I've got that going on in New York. Richard and I decided to meet over lunch at a restaurant by his house. I was a little nervous. You know, now I've got these two offers all of a sudden coming at me. I'm torn. There's New York on one side, Paris on the other, and you know I have to make a decision, and I, I don't know yet. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. I said that some details with regards to my firm. Lately, we've been trying to do exposure overseas. We believe we've hit pay dirt with Garrett. I didn't come three thousand miles, okay, to get hung up on. Give me one shot, okay? I'm good at what I do. I work my balls off. Good morning. Let me get Mike on the telephone, please. Listen, Kirby, I'm going to be really brief with your time here. I said that some details with regards to my firm. Have you had a chance to go over it yet? One thing we'd like to do as a group is bring on a staff of guys to help us with our, our marketing and just basically our footprint. Let me ask you, are you familiar with the company? Did you ever hear of them? It's an affiliate. They're one of the largest natural gas producers over here in the States. Lately, we've been really trying to do exposure overseas with Great Britain, you know, so Ireland, Scotland. 
We believe we've hit pay dirt with Garrett. Right now, the stock is currently priced at a touch over $36 a share. He's pretty much right off the boat from Ireland. We had to get him all, all his visas and everything to make sure he was legally allowed to work. So far, so good. You know, he's, he's opening lots of accounts. Look, I didn't come here. I didn't come 3,000 miles, okay, to get hung up on. Give me one shot, okay? I'm good at what I do. I work my balls off. I came over here with nothing to my name. I've worked up a reputation. I have successful clients. He specializes, I could say, in contacting businessmen in Ireland. The thing about it is, okay, if I was calling America, people are a lot more short with me. I'm not, don't call them as much anymore now that I'm getting great success in Ireland. I'd just rather put in the extra hours. I'd rather get in at four o'clock in the morning and call Ireland than stay later. They earn north of $4.50 a share. Now, growth rate alone, I think you'll agree with me here, enough reason to already own the stock. People often say to me, you know you're only on the phone to me this long because you're Irish. It just makes them feel a little more comfortable, you can interact, you can make them trust you a little more, which is very important in a business relationship, especially when you're managing people. Welcome aboard the team. Let's go make some money this year, eh? Thank you, thank you, bye. Yeah, kid. Not that bad. Put him on the board? Put him on the board, man. It's just, just the board of uh, new clients and new assets that we raised. So just date, name, how many shares, stock, and uh, Garrett's initials. So. Is that three for him today? It's the hat trick, man. Well done, bud. Cheers. Is that your first hat trick? Yes, she is, yeah. That's how you make a lot of money in the business right there. Open a lot of accounts, bring in new assets. So this guy's going to be a millionaire the next couple of years. Does a hell of a job. More information on myself, Gareth from Dublin, obviously. Tremendous opening interest on the eight and a half strike. And the frozen concentrate orange juice that you're buying today in your supermarket, that price is being dictated right here on this floor. Every single day, that price will change depending on if there's more buyers or more sellers and who's doing what. Oh, there it is. We have a hurricane forming off the coast of South Africa, Hurricane Dean. It's right now a tropical depression expected to form into a hurricane. Could slam into Florida at the end of next week. So we have a lot of variables at work. Give me an idea what the weather looks like with this Hurricane Dean. Is there any, can we get an update? Here's the forecast that I slightly sell. Happy hurricane season, everybody. <laughs> what do you think of this hurricane? That's why I, I think the market's too bogus. It is bogus, but it'll bogus. support the market for an hour. 90% of them are. All right. Except that so, one, so the one that we wanted to put you out of business, right? Yeah. <laughs> you go back to 04 when hurricanes really weren't a factor involving the orange juice market. And I think it was Hurricane Charlie, which actually brought us into the hurricane phase, caught everybody by surprise. Hurricane Charlie that wasn't supposed to go through the crop. It was supposed to be down in Tampa Bay. And literally, the thing made a U-turn at the last minute and went right through the crop. When you're dealing with Mother Nature, it can come from, from anywhere. And it can come, you know, here's a hurricane that's not even expected to go anywhere near the crop. It's dead quiet in here, and then all of a sudden, it makes a U-turn at the last minute. Bang, it's in the crop. Thank you for coming in. Um, I just got back from New York City. Oh, how was that? How was your trip? <laughs> Tiring, as usual. Yeah. New York's fun, but it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> this business stuff that does beat you up. I sent you all the data points, mm -hmm. and thank you for your email. Obviously, as I explained to you uh, several weeks ago, it's a particular type of fit that we're looking mm -hmm. for in terms of language, the international background, um, and coming from a good American school. Mm -hmm. Have you had time to? Huddle with your family and your friends and your I've, your inner thoughts. I've, yeah, I've thought it over. I've been I've been here for two weeks, so you know I got to see a little bit what Paris was about, and I I just don't think it's the right fit for me at this point in my life. My life is in New York. My friends are there. Although my family's here, I you know it's too big of a change for me to move here. And I actually just heard back from a company in New York that I was in touch with them right before I graduated. Um, they do foreign exchange trading yes. and. I think it's something I'd be really interested in. Okay. I didn't know how to tell him really that I, I just wasn't going to accept his offer. I think that honesty works best. He understood, you know, and I mean, the main reason I didn't accept the job is from the get-go he let me know it was, you know, a big commitment. Not only the job, but also, you know, leaving New York and coming here. I don't, I don't think I'm ready for that. Maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fine with your parents and everything? Or? I mean, they're, of course, they'd much rather have me stay here, but, you know, they understand. I mean, obviously, I'm 21 now. I can't, you know, always be with them. <laughs>
We've all been there, just fresh out of school. Sounds like you have a path which you want to explore. What I propose then is, um, you know, we keep in touch. Um, I wish you lots of luck. Um, it's an exciting time for you, so give it your best shot, and I hope, uh, I hope you're successful. Got settled into the hotel finally, and one of the things I wanted to do is learn more about the owner's assets, what he has here, what's important to him, to try to find ways that I can actually add value to his business. Hey, I wanted to check as well if you'd be able to see if all the wires hit. You know, there's no better way to create a bond with a potential investor when you can actually help drive revenue to his business. The owner, as you can imagine, is extremely busy. He's running a lot of things. He has a lot of properties. He's actually building another property on the island right now as well. But we're going to be hopping on the yacht later tomorrow. So his marketing manager, Wasim, um, took us around for a tour around the island. There's about seven and a half million people in the whole island. Here we have this. Showed one. us four or five of the seven pools, a bunch of the different huts and, and dinner areas. This area, uh, up to about this step, will become basically the private beach. They've of been Maxim running Bungalow. the Sun Village Resorts for over 20 years. The Maxim part of it, they just kicked off. So I'm trying to think of ways that I might be able to get involved in helping what he's doing. I, th I think it has to do more from the investment point of what the Europeans have done in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Spanish investment, German investment. They've invested big. I can see the value proposition and why people would want to come down here. You can fly here for the weekend from New York. It's a three-hour flight, and you have an absolutely stunning environment. The sailboats are included. The windsurfing is included. It was a great opportunity to learn more about what's important to him, to find out other ways I can add value to his life and his business. Bonsoir. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. It was very hard saying goodbye to my parents. Hello, mm -hmm. Tonight after work, we've got a game. We have a four and four football league. This non-contact doesn't do it for me. I really had a great time visiting Paris and my family. It was really good to see them, you know, since they left. But it was time to go back to New York, and I told my parents that I wasn't going to accept Richard's offer. They were disappointed, but, you know, I told them about the job at FXCM, and they think that it's, you know, it's a better fit for me. It was very hard saying goodbye to my parents. It's always hard. It was a hard decision to make. I really love Paris. Every time I leave, I have this little stingy feeling in my heart, but I'm really excited about starting out at FXCM. I don't really know what it's going to entail. It's something completely new to me, but I just feel like I like New York better, and that's just where I belong at this point in my career. It's nice to get out here in the Dominican Republic, just to, to get away from the city a little bit. It's nice to be able to do business, but, you know, take a deep breath, let it all out, drop your shoulders. In this type of an industry, you're always thinking about business. You're constantly thinking how you can make things better. Sometimes you get so busy, it's hard to really take the time to think about what you can be doing differently. Tomorrow, we're going to go meet with the owner of the properties and go more into his environment to help make him comfortable and hope to have him see the value in our fund and uh, look to invest in us. Tonight, after work, we've got a game. We have a 4 and 4 football league and we play the uh, team we played in the championship game last year. Lions, official flag football game jerseys. 
Four you and four football. It's more of a speed game. Week. My defense yeah. isn't the, the May West. It's not the very best at all. I play <laughs> rugby as well, so uh, it kind of clashes wow. with my schedule. It was one of the deals where he, he quit before we had time to cut him. Yeah. And the next day, he's like, he's like, guys, I, I don't yeah. want to play anymore. I don't want to play anymore. So. He's playing a real man's yes, game. Uh, this non-contact yes, doesn't do it for me. We played a team called Urban Achievers. And we've actually kind of have a rivalry with these guys. It's pretty heated, they're pretty competitive, we're very competitive. We played them three times last year, we won all three games, including the championship game. Good job, Jamie, good job, baby. The biggest thing I know about Wall Street is that uh, you better know your sports because everything is an analogy to some kind of sporting event. Let's go! Come on, now! One more stop. We get the ball back. We score. That'd be a wrap. Be one more stop. Go, go, go. Oh jeez. They got a touchdown last play. They're actually going for two points. So if they score it, they win it. I'm not good at losing in anything. It doesn't matter if we were going to sit here and play pickup sticks, you know? And, and if I lose, I'm pretty sour about it for at least a couple days, and especially losing to those guys. Uh, I didn't take it very well, and I pretty much pouted the whole way home. It's been a rough week. Did I get this light? Oh, I think I did. <laughs> makeup? We need makeup. Steve just invested in a new headset there. You're going to get more dials than you would if you had one hand holding the phone. Why yeah. you put up my shoulder? I got two go words like for you guys. I think that Jerry Maguire. That's all you need to know, man. He had the headset, man. That guy's good as gold, man. But you can walk away when it gets too loud in here. And I can do it from across the room, you know? Plus, you can go to the bathroom.